you, the, the, the two of you reported on this administration day to day. Uh, you wrote a very stable genius, uh, the fantastic book about the first three years of the Trump presidency. Did you learn anything new about Donald Trump, uh, given how much time you had already spent, how much effort you had already put into reporting on him and his and his White House? You know, Jonathan, you're the perfect person to ask that question because and to interview us today on our launch because you also know this material so well. You've excavated it um, and we're looking forward to your book when it comes out. Uh, I think the honest answer about what we learned about Donald Trump is that all of the basic boundaries of who he is and how he leads and how he governs are pretty well known by us. You know, he's a impulse guy. He's interested in his own benefit. He is not so interested in anybody else's. And he also doesn't follow any rule book and it rejects norms and cares very little about sort of what Washington should do, what's polite, what's proper. I think the new thing that Phil and I learned that was even chilling to us as hardened journalists as we are is how much he was willing, the degree to which he was willing to put American lives and the democracy in peril for his own personal gain, for his own quest to maintain that grip on power that he became addicted to and loved. Um, insiders in that administration who looked from the outside and even to we reporters as if they were sort of silently acquiescing, silently standing by their man, were actually secretly in a near panic about the danger he was putting the country in during the Black Lives Matter protests, during the pandemic that lethally marched across our country, and then finally in a riot that he helped incite at the Capitol that put lawmakers and his vice president in the crosshairs, in, in actual mortal danger. And, and I, I think I think that's, that's well said. One of the things that was extraordinary for me about digging through and, and, and going over the major events of that catastrophic year is how willing, even eager, uh, the people really close to Donald Trump were to talk. Um, and I, I, I want to get to some of that and some of the motivations uh, behind the, the people that talked to, to, to people like, like you, people like me, um, and, and, and the eagerness to, to kind of set the record straight and to tell us that they had those concerns. But before we get to that, you, you write something right in the beginning of the book um, that is a really extraordinary statement. Um, you, you say, this is a quote from, uh, from your introduction, most of Trump's failings can be explained by a simple truth. He cared more about himself than his country. Phil, that, that, you're, you're a reporter. You're, 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 a, you're a great reporter. I've been side by side with you throughout all of this. Um, you didn't write that sentence lightly. No, Jonathan, we did not. In fact, that sentence, I think, is the the only conclusion that Carol and I could really draw from all the reporting we did for this book. We talked to 140, uh, more than 140 senior administration officials, advisors to the president, the president himself uh, down at Mar-a-Lago, and to a person, uh, they all acknowledged and, and, and were concerned by the fact that the president uh, when he was in office, prioritized himself personally, prioritized his political fortunes. Almost every decision he made in the year 2020 about the coronavirus pandemic was based on his re-election hopes. He was thinking about how does he position himself? How does he look strong? How does he appear tough? Uh, how does he get uh, magical cures out into the public? How does he speed up a vaccine? It was all built around November 3rd, election day, and how he could remain in power uh, and, and get reelected by the American people. That was the guiding and animating force uh, for this president throughout, but especially in the year 2020. And that's not our judgment. That's according to the people who served uh, him the closest and, and, and who saw up close what he was really like behind the scenes in the Oval Office. 